Domo Amejin des. Today is lesson 29. It's not really a lesson. There's no new material. I'm just reviewing、um, all the material we've learned from lesson 16 up till this lesson in preparation for assessment 2, which is going to be lesson 30. In video 30, I'll actually do the entire、um, assessment for you and give you all the answers with some brief explanations. So、um, definitely before you do the assessment, Watch this video, practice everything, take the assessment yourself, and then watch Lesson 30's video so that you can see、um, all the answers and why those are the answers. But without further ado, let's go on to our review.、Um, I'm going to start with Lesson 16. I'm going to show you guys you know, the conjugation charts and the grammar patterns as well as key sentences、um, for every lesson that we've done from 16 all the way up to this lesson. So, Our first、uh, conjugation chart is with、uh, shimas. Remember, shimas means it's a verb meaning to do. And what is done、um, usually are certain verbs. So, for example, benkyo, undo, shukudai,、uh, study, exercise, and homework.、Um, you can study, benkyo, shimas, benkyo, shimas. You can exercise, undo, shimas, undo, shimas. And you can do homework, shukudai, o shimas. Shukudai shimas. Okay.、Um, next, I want to talk about the past tense with des. The past tense is deshita. Okay. A wa b deshita. A was b. With mas verbs, regular verbs, you take the mas ending and you change it to mashita. So ikimas to go becomes ikimashita. Went. Tabemas to eat becomes tabemashita. I ate. Nemas becomes nemashita, slept, and benkyo shimas becomes benkyo shimashita, studied.、Uh, not too hard. And then、um, these, we have these patterns when you're conjugating into the past negative. Remember, the negative of des,、uh, there's two, dewa arimasen and ja arimasen. Now, to make that negative past,、uh, in the past, you just add deshita, the, the negative conjugation of des. Uh, so we have A wa B. De wa arimasen de shita. A was not B. A wa B ja arimasen de shita. Again, A was not B. When you have、uh, regular verbs that aren't des, okay, so V mas, verb mas,、uh, you can say, you can use the particle de to indicate where that action was taken. So if you study at the library, you would use で、図書館で、えー、勉強します。Okay?、Um, and if you, if you want to indicate that you did an action with someone, you do that, you say that someone's name and then と。Okay? と means with in this case. And then the verb, to verb with a. And the key sentence for lesson 16 was 昨日図書館で友達と宿題をしました。So, kino is yesterday, toshokan is library, de at with action verbs, tomodachi friend to with,、uh, shukudai o homework shimashita, did. Literally, in, I mean in English, this is yesterday, I did homework with a friend or friends at the library. Lesson 17, moving on, we have two grammar、uh, structures here. A ni vimas and a e vimas. Now remember this character is he, but it is pronounced e. That's only because it's a particle. Okay?、Um, they both essentially mean the same thing, to, when you have a verb of coming or going. Okay? So with ikimas, kimas, kaerimas, okay? You can use ni or e to indicate the direction in which you're going. Again, They're both pretty much the same, but there is a feeling with e that the,、um, you don't really have an exact purpose for, for going in that specific direction. It's just, it feels more like you're just going in that general direction. Okay?、Um, but essentially, they can be interchanged with one another. The key sentence for lesson 17 was Kyo no shimbo yo mi mashita. Now remember, this lesson also includes the particle o. And、uh, in this lesson, we talked about 
direct objects, what direct objects are, and that we mark them with O. Uh, so with the verb yomimas, yomimashita, to read, you mark the thing being read, or the direct object, with O. Kyo no shinbun newspaper o yomimashita. I read today's newspaper. Lesson 18, stating existence with arimas. Remember, arimas means to be, to exist, for inanimate objects. Um, and then the thing that exists is marked by ga, the particle ga. E ga arimas. There is an e. Wherever. Um, you can state what has something or, or um, for example, in, in the key sentence here, kono mise wa ehon ga arimas. So, ehon, remember, is picture book or a book with pictures, usually a children's book. Ga arimas. There is or there are uh, picture books. But we're talking about this miset, this store. So as for this store, there are picture books. Now you can literally, I mean, this is better translated in English as there are picture books in this store, but I think it's better to think of it as this store has picture books. A lot of times, um, whatever a is for e ga arimas is translated as have, has a, it has a. This store has picture books. Lesson 20, stating locations. Um, you can state, taking this idea of uh, ga arimas, there exists something, you can state where exactly it exists using ni, okay? A ni b ga arimas. There is a b at a. So at a, there's a b, exists there. Um, and remember, arimas is for inanimate objects. Imas is used for animate objects. E ni biga imas. And then you could kind of flip it around and change the direction of the sentence to talk and focus more on uh, something that exists in a place. So, e wa bi ni arimas. Or if it's animate, e wa bi ni imas. Okay, e is at b, or e exists at b. The key sentence for that lesson was Tashirojima wa Nihon ni arimas. Remember, Tashirojima is the famous cat island in Japan, one of the cat islands. Um, and we're saying that as for that island, well, it exists in Japan. Tashirojima wa Nihon ni arimas. Lesson 21, uh, we're talking about adjectives now. We have a bunch of adjectives that we introduced and how to conjugate them. You can conjugate adjectives. Um, let's focus on the negative conjugation of adjectives for now. Uh, we got a few here. Ouki, atarashi, akai, i, okay? Big, new, red, good. To conjugate, uh, by the way, these are e adjectives. They all end in e. And to conjugate e adjectives, you take the final e and change it to kunai. Kunai. Okay? So, ouki becomes ouki kunai. Atarashi, atarashi kunai. Akai, akaku nai. And e is an exception. This is the only exception as far as I know and when it comes to adjectives in Japanese. Um, originally, e was yoi. But now people just say e. However, the conjugation patterns stayed the same for from uh, when it was yoi. So, uh, e becomes yokunai when it is in the negative form. Another type of adjective that you have in Japanese are the na adjectives. Na adjectives. Here are some right here. Yume, kire, ben, li, lippa. All right. Famous or well known, pretty or clean, uh, convenient, and then splendid. Lippa. And to conjugate those into the negative form, you conjugate them like uh, des, as if they had des at the end. So um, negative would be de wa arimasen or ja arimasen. Yume ja arimasen, not very well known. Kire ja arimasen, not really clean. Benni ja arimasen, not convenient. Lippa ja arimasen, not uh, fine or splendid. And the key sentence for lesson 21 was Ano tatemono wa totemo furui desu. So, ano, that thing over there, tatemono building wa e, totemo, remember, totemo means very, very, furui, old, desu. So that building over there is very old. 
Lesson 22 um, was all about the particles yo and ne. These are sentence fi final particles. Um, I'm going to describe them really quickly. Uh, yo is used when the speaker thinks that the listener doesn't know the information that he or she is about to say. And it's usually used in a helpful uh, tone of voice or in, in situations where the speaker thinks they're being helpful uh, when they're giving this information. So if someone asks you, oh, what time is it right now? Oh, it's 2.40 desio. Okay, you can add yo in that case. Ne, this ne that we studied here, I like to call the friendly ne. Whenever you use ne at the end of the sentence, usually um, you're invoking some kind of response from the listener, okay? And when you're just making statements, you can add ne to make it a little friendly and um, Usually people use this when they want the listener to agree with them or to just say something in agreement. So the key sentence here, kono kouen wa kirei desu ne, usually will have um, the listener, once they've listened to the speaker say this phrase, the listener usually will say something in response, ah, so desu ne, and usually the listener's response will include ne as well. Lesson 23, asking for descriptions using donna. Remember, donna means what kind of. It's a question word, what kind of. Kanojo wa donna hito desu ka? Kanojo shi wa donna hito. What kind of person desu ka is she? What kind of person is she? Lesson 24, asking which using dore and the following ne. Uh, so, um, dore means which one, which. But, it has other forms, dochi and dochira. Dore is normally used for a list of items three or more. Dochi is normally used for a list of items two or more. I have actually seen dochira used for both um, to replace dore and dochi. Um, according to grammar books and whatever, dochira is similar to dochi in that and it also implies two items only. But uh, dochira in general, it just has a more formal feeling to it. Uh, so you can use it in place of dore or dochi, in my experience. And the final uh, grammar point for this lesson, I guess, is no. Um, typically, this special no follows adjectives, and it means the blank one. Okay, so the black one, kuroi no. The white one, shiroi no. Okay, it can be used like that. Hayashi san no kuruma wa dore desu ka? So, Hayashi-san is a person's name. Hayashi-san no kuruma, his car, wa dore desu ka? Which one? Which one is it? Okay, and if you were asked to draw a picture of this, you'd probably draw three or more cars and someone pointing which one is it. Hayashi-san no kuruma, dore desu ka? Lesson 25, listing nouns with to and ya. Uh, to and ya can be both translated as and in Japanese, but they're, they imply different things. So, to, if you're listing things with to, 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 um, you are implying that only these things exist or only these things are being uh, talked about. With ya, the implication is the opposite. <laughs> you're implying that there is more than what is just being said, which is why in parentheses I added and other things, dot, dot, dot. Okay. Kono kouen ni tori ya risu ga imasu. Tori ya. Risu. So, uh, kono kouen, this park, ni in this park. Tori is bird. Ya means and in this case. Risu is squirrel. Ga imas. There are. Um, I would translate this as in this park, there are birds and squirrels and many other animals. I don't know. Something like that. Because the implication is there's more than just birds and squirrels. Lesson 26, location nouns. Um, in preparation for the assessment, it would be wise to memorize all of the location nouns in the vocabulary part of that lesson. Uh, let's read the key sentence here. Shokudo wa toshokan no tonari desu. Shokudo, remember, is the cafeteria, usually in a school setting like a university campus cafeteria or a high school cafeteria. Wa toshokan uh, library no, the library's neighbor, neighboring, tonari. Tonari means neighboring, right? This. So I would translate this to English as the cafeteria is next to the library or is neighboring the library. Lesson 27, distance and duration. You remember uh, kara from the probably lesson 7, I think it was. Doko kara kimashita ka? Uh, igirisu kara kimashita, something like that. Kara means from. 
Uh, made is typically paired with kara in certain phrases, and it means up to. Uh, usually, it can be translated to to as well. So from this to that, right? Uh, kakarimas, a kakarimas is a phrase that means it takes a. Um, and a is some kind of uh, time expression. It takes an hour, it takes 50 minutes, what have you. The key sentence for that lesson was koko kara gakkou made basu de ichi jikan gurai kakarimasu. This is a lot. Koko, here, kara, from. So from here, gakko school, made, up to, uh, up to school, to school. Bus is bus, de, so by means of bus. Ichi jikan, one hour. Gurai, about, kakarimasu, it takes. So, in regular English, that would translate to from here to school by bus, it takes about one hour. Okay. And lesson 28, this is about question words becoming the subject of a sentence or a phrase. Um, review all of your question words. Here, the question word is dare. Dare ga kimasu ka? Dare ga kimasu ka? You use this kind of phrase when you really want to know something. Dare ga kimasu ka? Okay, and uh, remember the question word when it becomes the subject of the sentence is always marked by ga, always ga, nani ga, dochi ga, dare ga, doko ga, okay, never wa, always use ga. And that's about it. I flew through these um, reviews, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Take the exam, take the assessment, do well. Again, if you have any questions on that too, you can always leave it on the video. I will take the exam, the assessment for you, assessment number two, in lesson 30. That'll be the next video in this playlist. So good luck, guys.